Today's Bible verse, Acts chapter 3, from verse 1 to verse 10. Because the spiritual life is something that occurs in the heart, it's very different from that of the flesh. In another word, even if our soul is right now inside the body, it's not the body, it's the soul. Amongst the parables that Jesus Christ mentioned, there's the parable of the prodigal son. And the most important part is the dark side, uh, is the fact that God drew about the dark side and the bright side. When the prodigal son was in the, do in the pig's place alone, without hope, hungry, cold. He had nothing to rely on. But what does the Bible say? It's, he's, it says that he looked back. He imagined how, how rich the servants are eating right now. Although my body is in the pig's stable here right now, his heart had left to his father's house. And when his heart went to his father's house, everything was so amazing. The, there was a lot of servant, there's a lot of food, and they've eaten to the fact that they can't eat. When they say, eat more, I'm a fool, I can't eat. Although it's hard for his body to go to his dad, it's very easy for the heart to go to his dad. That's why God made our body different from the heart. From then on, the prodigal son visited his father every day. Each time he goes that there is peace overflowing, there's food, there's love, there's grace. But where he is, there is so dry, it's so dark, hunger, cold. But as his body, as his heart kept on going to his father's heart, his body eventually left for there. But the body kept on looking for excuses that he can't go. <sighs> Dad, I've committed to this, you and, and to heaven. And I cannot bear to go back as your son. So please use me as one of your servants. Yes. I'm going to, even if I work as my father's servant, at least I can eat food all the time. It's going to be okay. Oh, it's okay. That, it doesn't matter. I can at least work as his servant, right? And then he misses that. Something so interesting about the Bible is when... is when the father meets his prodigal son, he hugs him, crying out. And he says, Father, I've committed sin to you and heaven, and I cannot bear to be your son. And he says next, please, he has to now mention the word that please now use me as your servant. He's unable to say that. Why? So he couldn't say more than that because he felt like it's going to break his father's heart. He couldn't go more than that. And that's where he stopped. What the Bible teaches us is that we live in so much pain and darkness. That life. It talks about us overcoming that. Going away from that world. Through the heart. A few days ago, a senior sister in a church came to receive counsel for me and she received prayer. 
And while listening to her testimony, I found out that she had lived so such a terrible life. When she was 21, she could eat absolutely nothing. When I listened to how she lived her life, it was such a hard and harsh and bad life. And her grandparents were coming to church. She got introduced to our church and that's how she received salvation. She looked like an angel in my eyes. She, when I listened to how she was rejoicing and happy in God, although it was the same life, I, I read Acts chapter 3 from verse 1 to 10, and it's about um, Peter healing the man in front of the beautiful temple something so amazing about this is that when the 12 disciples of Jesus Christ when Jesus Christ was still alive all their thoughts were absolutely different from the thoughts of Jesus Christ They knew that Jesus Christ would ride, go back to heaven after Jesus Christ was uh, crucified on the cross of Calvary and revived once again. So God had to prepare the Holy Spirit. In our life, those several thoughts are being led by the, spir the Spirit of God. There's a person I know who fights, the couple fights every day. They keep fighting because, ah, my wife is um, going against me. She's dating another person. And, you know, when I look at them, I feel so much pity for them. So I got the opportunity. I was looking for the opportunity, and then I got it to meet them. There are two spirits in us. If you look at John chapter 13... Um, it is written that um, Satan placed the thought in Judas Iscariot that he should sell Jesus Christ. In Ephesians chapter 2 verse 2. Where in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Even if I come to church and and I do I give service to God, those who are really read, led by the spirit. Ah, oh, now listening to this gospel has given me this peace in my heart. Now I'm rejoicing. But those, on the other hand, who are led by the evil spirit, everything they see is just so negative. So even if they sit on the same seat and are giving up, doing the same service even from the same 12 disciples of Jesus Christ Judas Iscariot was led by the evil spirit and that's why he had the thought that how should I sell Jesus Christ if I sell Jesus Christ will I get this price and oh my god I'm getting a lot of money then he was in a different world entirely different world that the other disciples could never think of one thing I'm so thankful of I'm sure you've heard this till your ears cut off, but in 1962, I was, it was so hard for me. My life was so hard. I decided to go inside um, a technical school. It was a place where you can just line up and you can just go inside. Anyone can go inside, but I got no access. I failed from going there. All the people around me who went there got in. 
if Elder Sung Ho Lee was there, maybe I could have passed, but I had this really tiny crack in my teeth. So the senior, it was different from other people's signs. So that's when I realized that, uh, that this means that I've not passed. Then they told me that, yes, you failed. So I went back in. I said, please save me. So he said, why do you want to come into the army so early? Just come back next time when you're called by the country. I said, there's a reason. There's a reason I want to go. So, so and at that time, I had no money. So I had no money to actually fill that spot. So he said that, It's not even your crown, it's your front teeth that is cracked. I can't help you even if I have to throw uh, my job away. So, you know, the amazing thing is everything is connected to that. All the things I did every time there, I just failed in everything. So one thought that came into my heart was that uh, if I follow my thoughts, I will fail. That thought got into me very clearly. And so from then on, I was so afraid and had a lot of fear. That was 1962 May and 1962 October. By the grace of God. I received the forgiveness of sin and I was able to believe in God. It was the same Bible. If you look at Romans chapter 3 verse 23, for all men have short four shouts of the glory of God. For we are all sinners, right? We are sinners. We're really sinners. But if you look, read verse 24 of that same chapter, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of what? Through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ. Through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ, we have been justified freely by His grace. When they say that we're justified in the Bible, it only means one thing, that from this dirty sinner we become righteous. And now we're justified because we have received a um, clean heart from God. Obeying the law, you know, cleaning your heart, asking for forgiveness, all those things, none of them can ever make us justified. If we were able to cleanse ourselves from sin by praying, by working, by obeying the commandments, God would never send Jesus Christ to earth. There is only one thing, the only one way by Jesus Christ who died for our sins. They say the wages of sin is death. Who can die instead of all of us here and die on the cross of Calvary? Because he also is a sinner. How can he die for other people's sin? He has sinned too. He's going to go to hell. So he had to send Jesus Christ who had not committed a single sin to die for our sins forever. So although we are the same person, Where our heart has to go through, flow towards, is, I have a lot of sin. I'm dirty through Adam. 
I have to die. But all the sins that I've committed, it has been crucified on the cross of Calvary with Jesus Christ. My sins and Jesus' blood, when they got connected, I was able to have a perfect salvation. The reason many uh, Christian uh, Christianity are making mistakes is because Jesus Christ sent, uh, was sent by God so that He would, because we can now wash our sins away. Other churches in the world, oh, they, they're trying to say that you have to obey the gospel. You have to do something. You have to do that. You have to do this. Romans chapter 3 verse 24 is such an interesting thing. For all of sin and come short of the glory of God. But in verse 24, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. By his grace. We had, we did absolutely nothing, priceless. In Romans chapter 2, there's a verse which says that we, by not working, you cannot receive the payment. But we did absolutely nothing when the blood of Jesus Christ, through His grace, connected to all our sins, we received the perfect salvation. Can you follow after, repeat after me? Justified freely by His grace. There is n absolutely nothing we've done. And only by His blood, we have washed our sins away perfectly. It means that we lack. We are not enough to wash our sins away. But people say, isn't that easy? I laughed. Why? Why do you think I laughed? Then if he is here to wash away our sins, There is absolutely nothing that we have to do. <laughs> so when we're unable to receive the redemption of Jesus Christ, the reason why is because we did so well. <clears throat> we did overly well. We have to be not able to do it, but because we did it so well, that's why. In Romans chapter 4 verse 4, it is said that now to him the wicked is the reward, not reckon of grace, but of death. So in other words, he's taking that as a death. It's fake. The only way that I can wash away my sin is by Jesus Christ. Let us sing this song. The only thing that can wash away my sin is the blood of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Through the blood of Jesus Christ, <clears throat> my s all our sins have been washed away. The sins of our, our generation, the sins of our other generation, the sins of the world. It has been completely be cleansed. <clears throat> but something that we have to do from there. 
I uh, because Jesus Christ have not been able to wash away my sins. I have to do this and that. That is, there is no way this is going to happen. So the reason why then we're going to hell, if we die today, let's just say if I die, the reason why I go to hell is because I didn't do what I did overly well, not I didn't do well. I'm, I know that amongst all of you, there is not a single person who has not committed sin, right? <clears throat> but you don't write that behind your back on an A4 paper. You usually hide it and you usually commit sin secretly. But the important thing is it is true that redemption is in the process of re receiving uh forgiveness of sin but redemption is not something that we have to do it was only when jesus christ said that i he it is finished was when our sin had cleansed away only when you believe in the name of jesus christ is when you are actually cleansed from your sins because jesus is the name that we need and jesus means that he is here to die for our sins so when, when Jesus Christ said it is finished on the cross of Calvary, it means, it means that he had finished all the sins of the world that he had come to die for. <clears throat> all your sins has been washed away. Then what are we believing in? We believe that at that time Jesus Christ shed his blood on the cross. In the Old Testament, they would take a temple and they would um, make the sacrifice on earth. And because the earth is of a time-based system, if we receive the forgiveness of sin, it's not going to be eternal. But Jesus Christ, to wash our sins once and for all, he did die on earth, but his blood, if he had... If had if it had been used on the earth, then we would ha he would have to come again and die again and again and again. And in Hebrews chapter nine verse eleven, but Christ being come and high priest of good things to come but a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building. And this is talking about the temple that is in heaven, because the temple that is in the land, the earth today, because it is time-based, if he dies, he has to die up several times, but when he carried the blood to the temple in heaven, our sins had been washed away forever. In Hebrews chapter 9, verse 12, Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once, once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. So it's not by coming again and again to die for our sins, but only once, neither by the blood of goats and cow, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. When I opened the Bible, I think the most first important thing about the Bible is that it's going to make us realize that we have received forgiveness of sin. The woman who had committed adultery when was placed in front of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ said, those of you who have no sin should be the first person to throw that stone. And then he, saw, he told the woman, I shall condemn you not as well, that you go and sin no more. It means that he's going to wash away the sin. Mm -hmm. 
the first gospel is trying to say that um, we cannot be cleansed, that we we are always sinners. The second word saying that go and sin no more, he's going to try. He's trying to say that we ha he's going to wash our sins away because by Jesus Christ, by the grace of God, we by grace. I said we've not no payment, absolutely no payment. He has made us free from our sins. He has justified us. So now Jesus Christ is saying we're saved. When I went to Tom Dominica, I met a lot of Christian leaders. I said for the first one, I said I'm righteous. And then all the pastors that were so surprised, and then everyone kept on raising their hands, saying, "Pastor, Pastor, I have a question." And they asked, "Pastor, you have never still, you've never lied before, you've never done this." Oh, I stole a lot. <laughs> oh, I've lied countless times. I think I probably stole and lied the most amongst all of you. And they all asked, "Then how are you righteous? Oh, how are you righteous?" And then I answered, I don't know very well, but one thing I am sure is that God said, I am righteous. Then doesn't that mean I'm righteous? And everyone opened their eyes widely. I said, read Romans chapter 3 verse 24. In Romans chapter 3 verse 24. Being justified freely by His grace, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. By His grace, by Jesus Christ, without paying anything, we have been justified freely. This is what Jesus Christ said. That is what God said to us. God has said we're justified freely and and we have become people who have received that redemption. Yes, I've committed a lot of sin. I can't even remember those ones. But it, Jesus Christ, who is a judge, says that I'm righteous. Then doesn't that mean I'm righteous? Pastor, for a while, they were so quiet. Then suddenly, all of them ran up to the stage, and they said, "And they said, Pastor, sign my on my on my or please take photo with me." I can't count how many times I took picture that day. They had a lot of flash busting and my eyes, they were blinding. I closed my eyes like this, holding and covering my eyes. The pastors. They had never been able to wash their sins all their life. An elder in Korea of a Methodist church had said to me that now it has been time it is time for him to die, but his sins has not yet been washed. He said that he wants to go to heaven, but he, he has sinned, so he's trying and looking for ways to wash away his sin. So I heard that he had died insulting God. Because he's unable to wash his sin. This is not a funny thing. So many people who are at their deathbed right before they die, they have a lot of sins that they are they know themselves, but they are not able to say it out. And in pain and in burden, there are so many people who are dying like that. And many pastors of Korea, it's because they're teaching them that they are sinners. And they're saying that I am a heresy because I say I'm righteous. That's a very funny thing. But many things have changed today. <laughs> many people are listening to my, my gospel. Our gospel. What the Bible is trying to say is very simple. I went to Mexico recently. 
and the vice chancellor of the mission school there he said that he's uh, all our mission school students are actually looking forward towards what um pastor is gonna say and i heard that they have listened to the spain version of me preaching I gave around um, 100,000 copies to the Christmas cantata, cantata, and um, I think it's gonna lack. So a lot of pastors, they say the pastor, I've read this book that you've given me, and I've read up to half, and it's so good. Can you give me around 200 copies for my brethren and my church? It's like a dream. I'm so happy. <laughs> Why do many pastors in the world, although Jesus Christ has died for our sins, keep saying that we're sinners? It means that Jesus Christ did not die on the cross of Calvary and he has been unable, he has failed in washing our sins. And they don't know how many people are being suff suffering or in pain because of that word. There are two important things. For 10 years, I had gone there to preach in Suan Prison Center. So once in the Chonju Prison Center, I met a man who killed his wife and daughter with a knife. Now he has to receive all the penalty before going out. So I received um, a letter that I should do counseling for this person. So I went to meet her meet that person and then for two hours I was able to under explain I was able to hear how she killed her husband and her daughter in in that room that were <clears throat> So when you're sitting there with that kind of woman and talk together, you know, you, uh, don't you think they're gonna be scared? I don't know how how it's how you are how you think about it, but me, I, I will be scared. What I cannot understand is that between couple, you know, you can fight. Sometimes you can quarrel, but sometimes maybe you can fight and kill one another. Maybe up to that, I understand. But how can you kill your ba baby who was only three months old? And she was telling me all this story as she was crying and weeping. One day she gave birth to a child, and she was taking a car, and she was she went, came back home, and their new life began. When her, when the husband went went to work in the morning, and she was not feeling well. She was lying down on the floor, and at ten o'clock she woke up and she did the cleaning, and she 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 washed her baby. She wrapped her baby in a beautiful, very pretty uh, tower, and then she laid, laid her down on the bed, and she was so, so pretty looking. You know, all the mothers, they love their children and boy, baby, and they look very pretty in their eyes. You know, there are many kids and many, many babies in our church. But when they're when I don't see my grandchildren, I'm not that much interested to see them. You know, actually that's true. So this woman, although she her baby was very pretty and cute, but she was a little over emotion, and she was so pretty. She would rub her cheek against her baby's cheek, and she loved her so much. 
at that point one thought came into her heart, came into her mind she's so pretty but if somebody stabs her in the stomach what am i going to do that thought came up in her mind and if if that happens you know what what can they, what, what can they do now, nobody would actually do that but what You know why the whole world is committing sin? You know why a couple is fighting one another? You know why people are still stealing? Because they are all possessed by this evil spirit in their mind. And this woman, she was so afraid, she called her husband. Honey, I'm so afraid. I'm so scared. But you know, the husband would understand why are you, why are you scared? You know, you're okay. You know, it is our house. You're, you're living. Maybe you are... You're getting maybe a little, you are, maybe you became a little weak since you gave birth to a child, maybe, but it's okay, no, there's nothing wrong. But this scary mind, this, this fear grew bigger and bigger and bigger. After a month later, she had a thought that if, like, if this goes like this, my child will die. Actually, that kind of person, if comes, she comes to our church, we can easily solve that kind of problem because when I people, when I meet many people, I can easily see, oh, this, this lady is captured by this evil spirit. You know, when Sister Kim Jong came first in our church, it was obvious in my eyes that she was, although the evil spirit had already planned to kill her. And I told her to believe Jesus, and she said, no, I will do it later. And I told her, you know, it is already, the plan is already set up. The evil spirit separated her from her child, her daughter, her uh, family, her mother, her brother. And the evil spirit pushed her to jump uh, from the 38th floor of the apartment. And I told her, you know, sister, lady, you can't do it. You should receive Jesus now. And I cried, and I shouted, and she was a little surprised, and she accepted what I was telling her. She said she was a little scared back then. So you don't know, you can die any time now. And uh, there was something in, my, in her mind which was telling her, you know, you have to take a rest. But if you, if you, t if you jump off from the 38th floor, you will leave. You know it's okay. You even if you don't, even if you kill yourself, you know your mother will take good care of your 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 daughter. It's okay. You can kill yourself. You know, you know it's true. You can the mother can help, but it's it can't be better than the mother herself. But you know she o opened the window and she almost jumped off the off the thirty eighth floor, but she didn't. Thankfully, she didn't drink and. Because she was, she didn't, she hadn't, she didn't drink. That's why she was, she could stop. And that's when she came up with the idea that, oh, so the the sister that I know, she committed suicide this way. She had no reason to commit suicide, but when we're supposed to go climbing the following day, and that's when she remembered, ah, she must have heard the same voice as I'm listening today. And that's when she closed the window, closed the door. And the following day, she came to see me, and she heard the gospel, and she was saved. After her salvation, she was going down to Busan. She was taking KTX. The fortune teller was telling her, you know, now that you believe in Jesus, you know, the, your ancestors will harm you, will hurt you. But you know, actually, if Jesus died for me, for to wash my sins away, then... He will save me, and he she burnt all the and she burnt all the charms that uh, the fortune teller had given her, and she had a hard time burning it because when she was burning, she heard this voice. Mm. But anyway, when she was pull pushed by this evil spirit about a month later, she was afraid. Oh, if this continues. For like this, my my baby will die. 
time time in the in the middle of the night she'll wake up and uh, she'll be surprised oh where's my child what's my child and and another thought came followed up oh if i die then my husband will go out with another woman and he'll get married to another woman because i'm dead actually that's true if he if she dies then the, ma the man cannot prepare everything for himself if you don't want her to die, actually, actually if she, she didn't want him to live with other woman, she could, she shouldn't die. And she was not dying anyway, but she was so afraid. So in her thought, this, my, this evil spirit kept t coming and tell her. Oh, uh, if I die, they'll, they'll they'll kick on my daughter in the in the middle of the winter and he'll be he'll be knock he'll be knocking and uh like not being knocking on the door mom dad let me in and they'll be eating like this roast meat and stuff as she as they keep her out so this kind of thought just came up in her mind so as we talk to people we can easily see whether the person is captured by the spirit or not but most people they don't they don't they don't see that as we talk to one another, we can easily see how oh, this person is being dragged by evil spirit. It is so clear that Jesus died for our, for our sins that he made us whole. And he died on the cross to make us whole. But there are many people who still tell us that we are sinners. How are they reading this Bible? So the Bible is telling us through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, we are made righteous, we are justified, the Bible says. I blotted out your transgressions. Isaiah, Isaiah 44 verse 22, he blotted our, 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 our transgression as uh, clouds. We all like sheep have gone astray, but the Lord has laid our sins upon him. Jesus was given for our transgressions and he resurrected for our uh, justification. Romans 4 verse 25. The Bible is so obvious about we being righteous, we being justified. But many people, they're not listening to this Bible, but they're still holding on to their thought. Yeah, it's true. Oh, no, we are a sinner. No, it's true. We are a sinner. But Jesus died for us and he made us all. And it is clear that we are made righteous, so we are righteous. So how many people in the March of 2017, young brothers in our church, they visited this, they visited the United States. And there were 700 pastors who had come for the CLF, CLF. And I explained how our sins are washed for three months. And people, they were shouting, oh, amen, hallelujah. That's when they, sh that's what, how they reacted when they heard the gospel. You know, American pastors, they're so uh, honest. They tell us, actually, uh, although I'm saved, but I, although I'm saved, but Although I'm pastor, but I never believed that our, our, I was righteous. But now, through the Good News Mission pastors, I heard the gospel, and I'm saved now. So, like, they would go to their church and tell their members, oh, you know, I did not receive salvation, but when I participated in the program here, I, I, I truly got saved. So there are, they share this honestly. During last uh, New Year's Eve uh, service, there were 100,000 people who came in uh, the stadium, in Uganda and they heard the gospel <laughs> so one day in uh, Tegu the daily Tegu daily a journalist he came and he asked for an interview and I told him I told him okay you could and there were uh, it was in the middle of a uh, grand Bible seminar and the journalist asked me what are what was the difference between uh, the ordinary church and our church I asked her if well, he was going to any church. He said he was not. So, Jonas, do you know how our sins are forgiven by Jesus? Yes, I know that, at least. I heard that he died for our sins. 
Oh, you know that? Well, then. Then, John, let's, let's, let's say this. You know the mechanicians when they when you when you have when you pre prepare a car, he won't repair like you know just a part of it, but he will he will repair the whole. And he just came to wash our sins away, but did he just wash a oh, part of it? But he came to wash everything. And I explained to the journalist that we believe that our sins are forgiven, but in other churches, I don't believe, and they still believe that they are sinners. And the journalist was surprised. Is it true that you are, what you're saying? I told her, yes, go and ask. He told me, he asked me several times, are you sure that's how they, how they teach that we are still sinners? You go and ask. And then he asked me, then what do they really believe then? He talked to me for about 30 minutes. And the following day, the interview that we had just kind of covered the whole page of the daily and and he called me later just telling me you know pastor I got many phone calls from many other pastors today actually as a pastor I met the pastor of the park and I just just wrote down what I the the, 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 the content of the interview so this is my right right this kind of stuff he said but many people they're captured by this evil spirit. And with mouth they sing, all oh, our sins are forgiven through His grace. But they would later ask forgiveness. Happy day, happy day. When Jesus washed my sins away, they would sing the song and they would ask for forgiveness again. So there are two kinds of spirits. So there was one spirit that says our sins are forgiven through him. There's another spirit that says, although Jesus died for our sins, but still we are sinners. So those who are led by evil spirit, they wouldn't believe that our sins are forgiven. But those who believe in Jesus, they will be they will be happy and they'll be thankful that their sins are forgiven. Just, just as the song says, Happy day, happy day when Jesus washed my sins away. So Jesus he has to wash our sins away perfectly. If he washed just ninety nine percent of it, then that's not totally washed. You know, he washed our sins away totally, perfectly. So that is what we believe. There are two types of spirits. One spirit says our sins are forgiven through Jesus and we are made righteous. So with that spirit, if you read the Bible, you will see all these stories in the Bible explaining how we are made righteous and all. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the seed of the world. Oh, He's also taking my sins away too. So it's true that Jesus washed my sins away. And if, if, even if we sin again because He washed it already, so He's forgiven, it's okay. So he washed our sins away perfectly and totally without leaving even a even a even a tiny bit of it. Today what we are talking about is that there are many spirits in this world, but the spirit of Jesus Christ, what does it say? What does it tell us? Although we sinned evil we, although we committed evil sins in our lives, but Jesus the, the spirit says our sins are totally forgiven. 
And the evil spirit tells us, you know, it's true Jesus died for our sins, but no, you're still a sinner. And that's what the evil spirit says. So those who believe it like that, even to their death, although they do the many services, they sacrifice themselves for the church, but because they, are, they, have, they have their sins left in their hearts, they'll struggle and they'll be suffering and they won't be able to stand it. You know, there was one uh, inmate in the prison who was sentenced to death and he wrote us a letter. He, he wrote, a, uh, wrote us a letter from uh, Daegu prison. We preached, preached him the gospel and he heard the gospel. And he received salvation. And then I went to army. And I, while, I, while I was in the army, it was executed. I was very much disappointed. And one day I was going to Pugak Skyway with my wife. And it snowed all of a sudden. It, the, way was, the way was getting very slippery, so I couldn't move anymore. And right next to the road, there was a little church and there was a court and I parked my car in the court. And the pastor said, oh, you're doing, well, that's a good job. You should stay here until the snow melts down a little bit. And this pastor happened to be a pastor who, had, who was from North Korea. And he prepared, uh, pa the pastor's wife prepared us kimchi rice, served us kimchi rice. We ate it so well. And we began to talk. And he told us, told us that he was, he was working as a pa prison pastor of Daegu prison. And I asked him, do you know any brother Nam Min Hwan? I know him very well, he said. You know, I heard that he was executed. Yeah, I was there when he was executed, he said. Actually, I, I heard the loving brother being executed because I was in the army. I didn't know how that happened, but that did because it snowed a lot. I came to that church and I was able to talk to the pastor and I was able to hear about it. And the execution site, it is the prosecutor who executes. There are jailers, there are prison pastors, there are priests, there are like Buddhist monks. And they, when the executions begin, The prosecutor, you ask his name, you ask his birth birthday, and we'll read the verdict. And according to the verdict, we execute him. He'll say. And at the end, uh, the 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 prosecutor would give the word to the to the, to the person to inmate, asking what, what whatever you want to say, you can say. They give the right to talk at the last at the at the at the end. And brother Nam, can you take off this uh, covering from my head? And the pastor said, I'll, I'll be responsible so you can take it off. And he, he took it. And he said to the executors, you, you may have pity on me because I'm not, I'm, I'm being executed now. But, you know, in my, in my opinion, actually, I have pity on you. According to the Korean laws, they execute me because they cannot forgive me. But according to God's law, I'm forgiven and I'm made righteous. And you, may, according to Korean law, you may not be a sinner. But according to the heavenly law, you are sinners now. So you have to, you shouldn't die like this. You also have to accept the fact that Jesus died for our sins and you have to be saved as well. And he preached the gospel. And he sang the hymn saying, On my way home, Jesus is walking along with me. He sang the song and he said, Okay, th that's it. And they put the covering again and they executed him. And he stood before God. And according to the process, according to the pastor, <laughs> According to the pastor, the prosecutor later, he said that, oh, we, there is no law in Korea. We should have, we should have kept this kind of people alive in, in the Korea, but we don't have that kind of law in Korea. He kind of regretted. That's what the pastor saw later. So from the room number 19 of Daegu prison, we pushed him the gospel and he was saved and he was so happy. But he went to the heaven, went to heaven before us. 
when he was first uh, sentenced to de death, he so many student, many friends, he's so many, he's many people, they wanted, they didn't want to see him anymore. And so he re rejected all the visits. And one day, some people, they f th uh, th uh, threw, threw in some flyers. And he was reading those flyers and he was like, you know, this is useless. And he was almost, he almost teared it off. But because he was in the uh, solitary cell, he was so bored. So he read, began to read those flyers. And he asked for a Bible later and he got a Bible. He began to read the Bible from then on. And in the Bible, he read the story where the robber who died on the cross with Jesus, he was executed with Jesus, but Jesus told him, you'll be in the paradise with me. And he heard the gospel, and he was saved. And we used to, go, we, before, we, we, would, we used to go to prison for prison witnessing. Every Monday, we'd go to prison and preach the gospel to people. And there are many people who received salvation. And they all went before Jesus with joy and happiness. Depending on the spirit that is leading us, we may read the same Bible, but we may discover, some, for some people they may discover righteousness, but for some people they will discover sin. There are people who read the Bible will discover sin, but those who are led by, the, led by God's spirit, as they read the Bible, they will be able to discover the word saying, we are raised, we are made righteous, we are made, ju we are justified, we are sanctified, and there is no more condemn condemnation. So you live according to your thought. If you want to wear pretty cloth, you wear pretty cloth. If you want to eat something good, you eat something good. But you may think that you are living the life, but there, at the, at the core of your heart, there is evil spirit. You may be same, you may be same person, but depending on the spirit that possessed them, they, their life will totally differ. And they will be, and if the evil spirit captures the person, no matter how many times he may read the Bible, but he wouldn't see the fact in the Bible that we are made righteous and justified and sanctified. You know, before our the old version of Korean Bible, we would, we had to read it vertically, but now we read it horizontally. <laughs> and sometimes, as we talk to people, they will be. They will say, oh, because you're, uh, sometimes as you have fellowship, some people say, oh, maybe your Bible and my Bible is different. So because they, because they won't understand, I will I'll ask them, okay, we'll, we'll see your Bible and we'll read his Bible. He will be surprised because he will see the word righteous even in his Bible. So today we only have few churches where they teach that we are made righteous, we are sanctified by the blood of, blood of, blood of Jesus. That is why although they go to church, but people, they will go to from mountain to mountain and they'll cry and they'll weep. Why are their eyes covered by the evil spirit? Why they why why they don't see it? Andrew, Peter, Judas, Carrier went there with Jesus as as his disciples. Ever since, ever since the Pentecost, when the, when the Holy Spirit came in, what kind of Holy Spirit came down? The whole evil, the Holy Spirit witnessing how our sins are forgiven and how we are made righteous and sanctified. Unfortunately, many people, because they are being read, being captured by the evil spirit, just like the woman uh, stabbing her husband, her, her baby, to, to death. She was not dead, but she would think, "Oh, if I die, then my husband will marry another woman, and uh, the woman that she he will, he will marry will, ma will mistreat my uh, my daughter. Then it's better for my daughter to die, and I'll kill myself later after having kill after after killing you." So there was nothing wrong, but she was deceived by the evil spirit, and she she was doing all these things. So you are led by two spirits. If you're led by the Spirit of God, you will be overflowed by the Holy Spirit. And you will discover how your sins are forgiven. You will be able to see that, obviously. And you will be able to believe the Word of God. That my sins are forgiven. I'm made righteous. I'm made 
ju justified and sanctified. Although I sinned a lot, my sins are all forgiven by the blood of Jesus. But the, when you are evil, when you are led by evil spirit, you only believe that you are sinners. There is no no righteous, not no not one. Yeah, there is no righteous person. That is why we received forgiveness of sin. Yeah, I was one sinner, but now that I'm made righteous by the blood of Jesus, I'm righteous now. That is why God declared, God concluded saying we are righteous, we are made justified, we are sanctified. If you see Corinthians 6 verse 10. Corinthians, Corinthians, first Corinthians, chapter six, verse ten and eleven says, "Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkard, nor relivers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of heaven." And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Yeah, it's true we sin, but we are sanctified, we are justified, and we are washed. I want people to open their eyes spiritually. So that they may not be led by the evil spirit, but let them be led by the Holy Spirit. Then they'll be able to see this word. In 1962, I was suffering from sin. Although I thought I was believing in Jesus because, because I was getting older, I began to come into more I began to commit more sins. And every evening we would uh, we would uh, travel from field to field, and we will visit, we will steal, those those fences made of like you know little trees. We will you know with with a knife, we will cut it up open. And it was the exact size for us to, uh, you know. I did, I, I did many bad things in my life. I committed many sins. But Jesus washed my sins. He didn't leave anything behind, but He washed all my sins as well as snow. And we believe in that truth today. There are many people who don't know who don't know this truth yet. That, that is why we have a Grand Bible Seminar. And in order to let them realize this gospel, we witness. Actually, it's natural for us to do that kind of thing. Otherwise, we'd all, it, we would all ha have ended in hell. That is why in the month of uh, October, we are going to have Grand Bible Seminar. So please invite many, many of your uh, acquaintances, many of your friends, families. And as we are doing Christmas and Tara's in the United States, <coughs> in my education, the mayor of uh, mayor of Abidjan in Cote d'Ivoire, he came to our camp and he received the salvation. And this time around, I I met him. I when I went to Cote d'Ivoire, I met him, and he was so high. He would come all the way to the gate of the boarding gate of the airport, and he will, he will send me off. And he wants to work now with IYF. He's asking for the blueprints that they, so that they may build the church, build the center. And he also wants to treat a patient suffering from brutally, brutally ulcer. And, and the other one is also happy. All this precious work that we never imagined God is doing, in us, doing within us. 2015, Grouches Choir won the grand prize and Mark, uh, Mark Overdorf International Chamber Choir Competition. But what's funny thing is, what? Well, but what's funny is though, before winning the grand prize, they had already printed out uh, the banner saying "Gracias, the grand prize." So they knew in their heart that they were gonna win the grand prize. <laughs> and the the, the Boris Avalian, the conductor, he was very much uh, angry because always whenever they sing the first time, uh, they're the rhythm, their their note will be, wouldn't be right. But the second time they sing, their note will be good. 
So, but we can't. We'll see only once, not twice, on the stage. But that day, on the day that on the day that they competed, the first time they sung, they got the exact perfect note and they won the grand prize. And they took out their banner and they show. And people, they were really surprised. So there are people who can make a lot of money if they go to the world, but they are not making any money, but for only, only for the gospel they are singing today. And this time, this uh, they're in, uh, they're, they introduced a Christmas cantata on Fox TV in the Springfield. And there was a vo one volunteer who showed up during during the interview, and he, I can see many Americans changing through the through the gospel, and many Americans receiving salvation too. And we are living today. We are doing a lot of work just to witness this gospel that Jesus washed all our sins away. Everyone, let let us believe in Jesus, and let us let us live with this heart. Then we'll be happy. But even now, the evil spirit is trying to drag us into our thought. You may, you may, you may have thought that you were a sinner, but as listen to the word, the the Holy Spirit will come into our heart, and if you're led by the Holy Spirit, then you will be like Jesus. But if you're led by the evil evil spirit, you live in darkness. So as we live for the gospel, as we serve the gospel. If you preach the gospel like this and people receive salvation, we'll be so happy. Have you received the forgiveness of sin? Is there, are you still a sinner? Hope you believe the word of God today. You, you don't have to do anything. Just believe what Jesus has done for you. And I hope you live with the heart of Jesus. I have a prayer time. So I have a personal, personal prayer time.